One thing that I kind of live by is, is just trying to be extremely positive and this is, might be kind of funny, but just do what you love. When I come here and I'm putting the controller in my hand and I'm, or I'm doing sound design, like, it's, that's me. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm here for. Hi, I'm Mike Niederquell. I'm a lead sound designer here at Sony and I've been with the PlayStation family since 2011. I've never been a part of a project where someone laid out a vision like four years prior and how like how well that vision was upheld. I gotta commend the team on that and Corey to stick into his guns. I've been in some meetings where Corey, I mean, he really pushed back on what he wanted and like, it was really great to follow in his footsteps to kind of get us to where we are. I always just make mouth sounds for Mike Niederquell. So when I would go in and try to describe what I'd want, it was more just like, you know, like, and you're like, oh man, you're like, and this is ridiculous. Like I think if you were to take it out of context and listen to any of the things that I were to tell him, I don't know how he followed any of that direction. The only clear piece of direction I gave him was the world serpent voice. It's this mysterious entity that comes out of the water. It's giant, larger than life, and he wanted its voice to represent that, and he wanted it to be surreal and something you've never heard before and be very alien. I had these really cool uh, Tuvan throat singing videos, and I was like, I really want him to have this weird combination of monster and, 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 and creature, but also like a Tuvan throat singing thing, so it's almost like cyclical, like the didgeridoo almost. The, the, there's like five layers to it. So I went online, I went on YouTube and did, did my research, and I was like, I think I can maybe I can do this. And so I, I gave it my best go and I, I put a mic up to my mouth and I was like, and it's not that great. I used different pitch plugins and one of them was kind of like auto-tune, right? And that's kind of what gives the World Serpent its signature sound is it's trying to pitch correct when I do that tube and throat singing. So when you hear me restart like this, nah, no, no, no. Nah. It's me fighting against the auto-tune to get it to stick to where I want it to kind of correct it. And then once I find the note that I like, I kind of try to hold it as still as possible. And it kind of, that's kind of what gave it like its unique characteristic. Once you like start to add some of the plugins. Uh, so that's kind of like the base the bass pitch that I started with, and I kept iterating on top of that pitched version. There's there's clicks you might hear in his voice, and some of those clicks are like kitten purrs, some of them are like buffalo little chuffs, uh, there's tigers, there's beluga whale clicks, um, and all those things are kind of layered together to kind of give it all those other creature-esque sounds that I couldn't necessarily make with my voice. <laughs> We did a lot of Foley recordings down in San Diego and what that offered us was unique sound recordings to kind of craft the sound of God of War. The sound of the axe as it whisks through the air, it has that whoo, and then when it comes back to your hand and punk has that satisfying kathunk sound, the actual like really heavy, wet sort of thud sounds that it has when it hits, the sort of uh, cleaving sounds that it has, they seem to just elevate and punch over everything else. So even when Kratos is screaming, it complements and, and, and sort of feels like it's on a different level from where he's at. One cool thing we did about the, the catch sounds that I think a lot of people, it's resonating with a lot of people is, no matter where you throw the ax, we have an incoming embellishment. So on top of it, we have the whooshes that play of the ax spinning but we also have a when it comes back to you. And based on how far away you throw that, we actually will fast forward or rewind into the sound to do an offset to make sure that that embellishment plays at the right time when you catch it. So it'll always end in your hand. So if you, if you throw it close to you, it'll be I actually made homemade bull roars, which are if you think of like Crocodile Dundee or something like that, when he's spinning this giant thing, going wow, 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 wow. So it's basically like a string with a flat piece of wood on it that's kind of um, oblong like that and rounded. Those recordings ended up just basically being mastered and thrown in as the Dark One's wings. And that's always really rewarding as a sound designer when you can almost take like a singular source 
and just kind of EQ it and master it and put it into the game. There's, there's a picture one of the sound designers sent me from San Diego where he has his feet on a, like, like a T-bone steak. <laughs> <laughs> so they were literally putting their walking on red meat to get some of the flesh footsteps that we used. Uh, I think we used some of those inside the hive and Alfheim and areas inside of the world serpent. I think the sound for fatherhood changes. In the first like three years of my son's life, the sounds for fatherhood was screaming. But then I, I would say the sound for fatherhood now has changed to Papa. That to me sort of sums it all up, makes it all feel good and worth it. Is him actually calling out to me uh, and initiating a conversation, which is a big deal, I think, for me specifically. So that becomes a very personal, what is that sound of fatherhood? It's interesting because you look at the game and I think the sounds of fatherhood are boy. And then at the end, it's son. I think what I've enjoyed most about working on God of War is the collaboration. Each person on our sound design team has almost touched everything in the game. We had a very unique process where uh, someone would take an iteration on, on one thing and someone would have some ideas and we might have that other sound designer come in and offer their ideas. So it was, it was, it was very selfless. Like people were, were willing to let go of some things to have someone else try to put their icing on the cake, so to speak. Thank you to every single person out there who worked tirelessly to make this game, who suffered and struggled and doubted but, but ignored the doubt or overcame the doubt, uh, who put in way more than was ever asked. It is no mistake that people are talking positively about the audioscape of this game. This is not the kind of thing people do, you know, just to, to get it done. I think they do it because there's part of them that compels them to do something, that makes them desire to actually put a piece of themselves into something, become part of something greater. And I'm so, so blessed to actually be part of that, to actually stand next to smart people while they do really great things and then take total credit for it. So I did it all. Me. Yeah, I did not do anything. It's, it's super clear, right? And Anna, I'm very sorry uh, for whatever it is I'm gonna do in the next 48 to six years. Boy.